So the next part I think you guys are really going to like, um, for the most part. Uh, I want you to start to reference some of the stuff that we did before. Now we're going to do it on here. Um, and so the part that I'm really interested in is the polygon, right? So we took this whole definition, we mapped a polygon um, onto, let's turn it back on. We mapped it onto a really warped surface, right? And the reason we couldn't subtract it is because we hadn't flattened the panels. So now we have the ability to remap this information now onto these panels instead. And because these are flat, theoretically, we should be able to just cut them just like we did the perforated panel before, right? So um, let's kind of, I'm going to walk you through the process of tracing it back, trying to figure out how much of this I really need, okay? Because I, I might not need all of it, but it might be I need all of it and I just have to replace that, okay? So if I want my polygons, I'm going to need to have the frame because the frame is what's going to orient it to all of my panels, which means I need to have my surface closest point, which means I need to have my area, which means I need to have this deconstruct BREP. Now this deconstruct BREP, well, maybe not necessarily de the deconstruct BREP. So the deconstruct BREP is where I got each of those individual surfaces. Okay, and so the list looks like this. It's just a list of individual surfaces that have been subdivided across the overall surface. So um, since that is a, you know, sort of a fork, right? It's a choking point, a bottleneck. Um, that is a good place to consider whether or not I actually have that information already. So if I look down at my definition, I have a list of surfaces. And if I plug my panel in here, I see that they look pretty much the same. So the format of information that the polygons are mapped to in the old definition matches the format of information that I have created in my new one. So by my understanding, all I have to do is take this information, replace the surface connections, and then I've got my um, polygons mapped. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to copy and paste. I'll bring it down. Oops. And um, you you might want to consider at this point, since there are three connections, um, doing something that's kind of a best practice. Okay, so now another sidebar. Uh, best practice for when you're dealing with large sums of data. So right now it's not that big a deal. It's just, you know, what do I have there? Six, so 24 panels. So it'll just be 24 polygons, so it won't be such a, a problem. However, um, if you're dealing with like a, a high-rise building that has like 100,000 panels, you probably want to make sure that you're only processing information when you know it's correct. So um, rather than cross-referencing the information before to the information below by um, replacing one connection at a time, I can stop Grasshopper from computing the information until I've made all the connections I want. And then I release it to recompute. And that's done by using what's called the lock solver function. And so in this case, I'm going to lock the solver by right clicking in the workspace and um, hitting this button right here, lock solver. It puts a red box around the workspace. It puts a little lock on the left side. Um, but that allows me to just go through and replace all three of these surface connections without it having to recompute every time I make a connection. It's a very, very important function to know about because when you have a logic loop, that's how you crash. So it's a good practice to be in, in instances where you know what to do to eliminate the possibility of crashing by looping data. 
And then to turn it back on, click the lock solver again, and you'll see that it recomputes that geometry on the surface. Questions? Error. Okay. Let me come troubleshoot. So guys, I want to sidebar real fast and just kind of reiterate some of the, the process for troubleshooting. Okay. Um, so what happens when you have an error, right? You kind of freak out, everything turns red and it doesn't work, right? So I'm going to create an error here like this. Um, <clears throat> So here's my process. My process is to start at the source, right? The, the major error is going to be red. Sometimes you might have some orange, but orange just means really that nothing's passing through for the most part. So um, the tag in the top right corner tells you that there's an error here. And it says data conversion failed from number to point. So that means like if I personify this a little bit, this component is telling me I need a point, but you gave me a number. Okay, I like to think of it this way. Like I need a point, but you gave me a number. So then I need to uh, investigate systematically and figure out where it went wrong. And because our definitions read from left to right, it's a good practice to start working backwards from right to left when troubleshooting, is it not? I think so. So it says, uh, I need a point, you gave me a number. So when I'm giving it a number, that means that it's somewhere on the input side that I gave it a number and it needs a point. So where does it request a point? So I, I go over here and I can you know, hover over the possibilities and figure out what it is. Like I said before, I think I said this on Monday or Tuesday, I want you to be in the, the habit of reading the input values, particularly when you're troubleshooting. So if you hover over S and it says that they are surfaces, that's not the problem. And I hover over P and those are points. So that must be the problem. I need a point. You gave me a number. So then continue to work backwards. Follow the trail, so to speak, to where we gave it a number. And so I'm going to kind of just trace back along the line. I'm going to go to A, and that is area. Okay, so area is a number, not a point. And so then I'm thinking now that, you know, there are two outputs here. Um, the area's function, when I introduced it, is to find the center point, right, the centroid. So this is why um, when I say take notes on the general ideas, not on like specifics, because I don't want you to write that you connected the C to the P before or something like that. I want you to know why area is there. I want you to know that the reason we brought area into this definition was to find a centroid. So it'll help you make the connection that says, you know, when I hover over this, the centroid here, that's what I need. It's also, I can see that it is a point-based data um, output. So I can, I can fix that by plugging in C, and that, that fixed my issue. Okay, so this is a, a pretty localized issue. I'm glad that a few of us had it so that I could do it in such a small and succinct way. Um, and in great detail, but sometimes what you're going to see is that when you produce an error, it might be 10 or 15, it might have a string of 10 or 15 different components all in a line that are all wrong, and you have to trace it all the way back, and you need to, you know, every step of the way, you need to verify. Well, if my polygon's wrong, is it, is it wrong with the P, the R, the S, or the RF? And you go through the process of figuring out which one it is. Then you go back. And you say, all right, so if that's wrong too, then the S or the UV could be wrong. And then you just trace whichever one is wrong all the way back to the source and you figure it out. Generally, Grasshopper tells you with the orange trail and you can get back to the problem pretty quickly. But you might need to do some investigation. Okay? Helpful? Yeah, you know, generally I think every semester I go through explaining that in different ways, two or three, maybe even four times. 
um, because it helps to see it in a few different instances before it really starts to click what it means when there is an error. So, um, any questions? Yes. Yeah, the only issue that I have with mine is that the, the polygon stays the same size. Did you put a slider on the polygon? No. That's why. Yeah, so we don't have complete information here, and I'm going to get there in the next video, actually.